Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Good Parenting, Brighter Children Facebook Live. Those of you who have been able to join us live, thank you so much. We appreciate your support. I'm very excited to introduce to, uh, to you today my guest speaker, Jenny Oaks Baker. She's an amazing musician, and she's considered one of America's most accomplished violinists. Let me tell you a little bit about her. She began uh, playing the violin when she was three years old. Her mother recognized um, musical talent and uh, began, she began uh, playing the violin at the age of three. She later graduated from the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia, then went on to Juilliard School of Music in New York City and received her master's degree. She has performed all over the world. She has produced 14 albums and one of her albums, uh, Wish Upon a Star, a tribute to the music of Walt Disney, earned her a, a Grammy um, nomination, a Grammy Awards nomination at the 54th Grammy Awards, uh, and the, it was in the Best Pop Instrumental Album. She also has four incredibly talented musical children, and the thing that I love about Jenny is she wants to pass down this musical legacy. It's gone from her now to her children, and I'm sure that it will be passed to many other future generations. She has uh, given her children the same kind of love, encouragement, and support that her mother gave her. I've asked her to talk about how we develop talents with our children. She's mainly going to be talking about how you develop musical talent, but you can take her ideas and suggestions and you can incorporate them into any talent that you want to develop with your children. Um, she's going to be telling us a little bit about her musical journey, how her mother supported her and the specific things that she did for her. And she's also going to be talking about her children. Now, uh, at this point, I wanted to show you, uh, they did on location, they filmed on location, Copeland Rock Suite. It's just incredible. And I wanted to be able to show it to you. Uh, you'll see the enthusiasm of the children and the high degree level of talent that they have. However, since... Um, Facebook has changed all their rules as of January 18th. You cannot show any live uh, music vi videos through a Facebook live broadcast. So what I will do is after this interview, I will post it on all three of my Facebook pages um, and you can and watch it. I really encourage you to watch it because you'll be blown away. Um, also, this next week, starting Wednesday at the six o'clock slot on my Facebook pages, I will be showing a video of Jenny and her children performing in a number of different settings. So let's bring Jenny on. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. Well, um, so happy that you're here. We really appreciate you coming and letting all of our viewers know exactly all of the different things that they can do to help um, talent, develop talent with their own children. So I'll let you talk, talk and take it away and you can start and tell us about your, your uh, mother and what she did and how she helped you. Go ahead. Well, my mom um, took me to a concert when I was four years old. It was a concert of the Mormon Youth Symphony. My brother was, um, that orchestra later became the orchestra at Temple Square. But my brother was a French horn player and um, she was really impressed by the special guests they had, which were a number of young Suzuki violinists. Suzuki is a, a method of teaching young children to play the violin. They have viola, cello, piano, flute, um, guitar, maybe other instruments I'm not aware of. But um, she was so impressed by these young violinists up on stage that were playing so well for their age that she turned to me as a four-year-old and she said, Jenny, do you want to learn to play violin? And I said, sure. Um, and luckily, right then, a really prestigious teacher, Hiroko Primrose, moved to the area, and I started taking lessons with her, and my mom was very dedicated to helping me develop my talent. She practiced with me probably till I was about 12, and then um, after that time, until college, she made sure I did my practicing every day. So I'm really grateful to her. This is a picture of my mom as a pianist, and so she would accompany me, and it just shows my dad was very supportive of, of the whole experience. That is darling. I love that picture of you. Are you you're four years old there? I believe so. <laughs> that is great. And, and what other things did your mom do? So she sat with you, you said, until you were about 12 years old. Yeah, she and um, she attend all, attended all my lessons. She practiced with me. Um, when I was younger, I would, it's really a sweet memory, but I would sit on her lap and she would play my notes at the piano. And I played them on the violin, she played on the piano, and it just, we became really close through music, and um, 
it was it was a really tender way of developing a relationship with the parents. So when I when my, my when my kids, you know, when Lara, my oldest, my when she was three, I started her on the violin and um, practiced with her, attended all of her lessons. And then when um, when Hannah, our next child, was four, I started her on the piano because I wanted them to not be on the same instrument. I wanted them to be able to excel at their own instruments. Um, and then when Sarah, our next child, was three, I started her on the cello because cello goes really well with violin and piano. And I envisioned them performing um, songs together, you know, when they got older. And then when Matthew was four, he's our next child, our youngest. Um, actually, when he was three, I started him on the violin and I envisioned that he would be a violist and they could play quartets and piano quartets. And um, I thought that would be a great as Laura when she was three. This is your oldest. Um, this is Lauren. She was the one who learned violin. Violin when she was when she started and she was three. I believe she's three there. Okay. Um, and so and there's Hannah when she was four. She and started, she she started playing the piano. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to start a three year old on piano because they don't make little teeny pianos. So I convinced the best teacher in the DC area to start her when she was four. And she really took to it. So it was the perfect age for her to start. And I think we have a picture of Sarah when she was three. Um, so this is Sarah um, as a three-year-old with a, a cello that looks really big for her, but <laughs> was actually the right size. And then um, Matthew, I started on the violin, but he, when he was three, but he just fought it like crazy. And all my kids fought practicing. Practicing is not fun. And so of course children fight, you know, sorry, the difficult things in their life, the things that aren't just playtime. Um, but he fought it even harder than any of my kids ever fought. And he could play the little twinkle variations, but he just didn't feel like it. And I was so frustrated because I knew that he could do it. He just wouldn't. And none of my other kids, they, if they, if like when it came time to do it, they would do it, but he just wouldn't. And it was so frustrating. So I kind of gave up and I thought, well, He's a boy, it's okay. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe music isn't his thing. Maybe he'll just do sports or whatever. And, but then friends of ours started their kids on the guitar and I knew that Suzuki had a guitar um, program and I thought, well, maybe, maybe that's his instrument. And it was, so I'm so grateful. And he just took to it and he didn't fight it. And he just, he really, I mean, he still fights practicing. Every kid does. And when his other friends are playing, he wants to go play with them, but, um, I just make him get it done and then he gets to go play. So um, I really am grateful that I think we found the perfect instruments for each of our children. Now tell us about, okay, you said that as a child that you love to perform and I love the story that you told me about your mother, how she arranged for these opportunities for you to perform even in the neighborhood and stuff. Yeah, so I always hated practicing. I still don't love it. I, it's a necessary evil, I do it. Um, I, but I don't, I don't practice just to practice. I know there's some musicians and I admire them. They just love playing and they'll, if they have like a free afternoon, they'll, they'll arrange to go play chamber music or with others, or they'll just sit down and play their scales for the joy of it. I've, I've never been that way. <laughs> I love performing. And so I love performing well. So I'll practice in order to perform well, but that's the only thing that's going to get me to practice. I mean, and I mean, when I was younger, I had weekly lessons. So I would practice to perform well at my weekly lessons. And I also would schedule concerts and my parents would help me schedule performances that I would work towards. So I always enjoyed working towards something specific and then performing it. And so my mom could see this. And so she would bake cookies for the neighborhood children and invite them over and I would practice or perform for them. So that kind of kept me going when I didn't have other specific performances ahead of me. Well, I think performances, and I'm sure you agree, those are the things that really propel kids to practice hard because they're working towards a goal. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's usually great. So how do you get your kids to practice? Do you use incentives? I mean, I'm sure now they love practicing, or at least they enjoy it more than when they were younger. <laughs> no, so what still kind of incentives <laughs> did you use? Um, when they were younger, I used whatever would drive that child. So some kids... I mean, would I, if they wanted the Barbie playhouse or something, you know, they'd have to work really hard without fighting for a certain number of days. 
Um, so toy rewards or, you know, get this done and you get to go play with your friends. So now I just, there's Sarah, her new cello that we just purchased her full size. Um, now, I mean, they're kind of older. And so it's not like they're going to work for, um, you know, a candy bar. <laughs> Although Sarah, yeah. Sarah loves candy so much. She might, that might work for her, but I kind of, I mean, at, at some point you have to move beyond the rewards and just say, get this done. And the reward is doing well and playing well. And my kids are at that age where they kind of have to be internally motivated. Once the kids get, you know, I don't know, after age 10, they kind of need to be internally motivated. And the parents, of course, have to still make them practice and nag at them. Once the kids but, get, um, they really, I, I don't have to, you know, make the practice charts anymore. And, and do that kind of thing. There's some parents that, you know, make the whole practice time really fun. I never really worried about that so much. I kind of figured if I, I don't care if they enjoy it so much, as long as they get it done and they do a good job. And it's just like, do you care if your parent, if your children like taking a bath, does it matter? I mean, you can give them bath toys when they're younger, but you know, once they're like eight, nine, 10 years old, does it matter if they like taking a shower? No. Do they need to take a shower? Yes. Do I have to make their shower time really enjoyable? No. They just need to get it done. And they need to make sure that they're clean. So they need to do a good job. And so for me, it's practicing. Get your practicing done. And then guess what? You can go out and play with your friends. Or get your practicing done. And then you can do your homework. And then you'll do well in school. That would be great for you. So I just make sure that they, they do the practicing first. And I mean, if there's a birthday party or something right after school and they can't get their practicing done first, I'm reasonable. I don't want them to resent their music. Um, so we'll just figure out how else they'll be able to do it, whether they get up a little earlier, probably not, or not early morning people, <laughs> or they stay, they stay up later, or they, they skip going to whatever they need to, you know, they do their homework the day before, or they do their homework the next day, or whatever. Like, we, I'm, I'm reasonable, but... Um, they have to get their practicing done every day except Sunday. You told me that you have let them know that practicing is hard work, but that, um, and that, that homework actually is fun. And so they get the hard, hard work done first and then they can go do the homework, the fun parts. Homework, I, mean, I'm not, I don't care if homework's fun, but homework's easier. I think yeah. Practicing. Yeah. And so um, like, cause homework, you're not, you know, emotionally engaged and you're not, I don't think you're necessarily as, even as intellectually engaged, I guess like one part of your brain is, but I think music takes your entire brain yeah. and um, it takes your emotion and your mental and your spiritual and your physical and it's just a lot more work than homework. So homework can be the break and then they can go back and get more practicing done. <laughs> Exactly. Well, they have performed with you all over the world. So tell us about those experiences. I know that this one, tell them about this particular. So um, this is a, this is a picture of the filming of our Sound of Music video in Salzburg. That's the I am 16 going on 17 gazebo from the movie. Um, and that was, we filmed that last summer. It was so much fun. Like I, I can't even that was kind of the most musical highlight of my life, I think. <laughs> and one of our family highlights, my husband is also there. You don't see him in this picture, but um, he actually is probably taking that picture. <laughs> um, in the picture is our, our director, Danny Drysdale. But um, we were able to go and go to all the different sites around Salzburg and film this music video of the, the music from The Sound of Music. And um, it was just such a joy. We, we found kind of the climb every mountain mountain and we were playing that beautiful you know gorgeous theme at the top of the Austrian Alps overlooking all of Austria and it was just such a joy Hannah is holding an accordion because we couldn't you know bring a giant piano across the or the world <laughs> and trace around the piano so she's basically playing her part on an accordion but in the recording in the video you hear the piano but you see an accordion <laughs> so it's kind of fun Amazing. It was actually so much fun. So tell me, when right before a performance, do they get really nervous? Uh, I get what? nervous. My kids don't get nervous. And sometimes I get kind of frustrated because I want them to get nervous. I want to see that they 
care. <laughs> I've always felt like I get nervous because I care and I care how it goes and I want to do my best. And so the nerves help me in that effort. They make sure I practice. They make sure that I say my prayers before I go on stage and ask God for help. Um, they make sure that I just work my best and give my give my all. And my kids, because they've been performing so much with me, we, I mean, last year, last week, I think we did three performances. They're kind of over the nerves. They don't get nervous. And that's a good thing, but, uh, you know, at some point I need them to <laughs> kind of be nervous. But they always, they actually perform really well. They don't ever, like, forget their music. I forget my music more than they do because I'm, like, trying to keep track of, like, how's the sound and are, is, did my kids remember to take off their watch and are their fingernails clean and did their hair get brushed and are we, are we all, like, do we remember the you know, the performance shoes and, and the makeup and are we all matching or whatever, not matching, but just coordinating. Mm -hmm. And, um, they, they just knock it out and they never forget their music. And I sometimes I'm like, Oh my gosh, what do I play now? So they're, <laughs> they're kind of really impressive little performers and I should worry more about myself than them probably. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, this next slide that we're going to put up. Okay, tell me about this. Where were you performing? What um, was this also Sound of Music medley or what was it? I don't remember what we're playing here, but I think this was we we toured Taiwan last year, last okay. summer, and just per performed concerts throughout the entire country. So I think this is probably our last concert in Taiwan. And I don't even remember which city it was because they were hard to pronounce for me and hard to read. <laughs> but it was in a concert hall in, in Taiwan. And um, it was really a joy to perform there. We also performed a couple concerts in Japan. And, um, so it was, it was neat to be able to, to be with our children there and, and show them the world and experience that as a family. Amazing. Those are, and how old is your oldest daughter? Lara is now 16. Okay, so, and then Matthew is? Is 11 right now. 11, so that age range to be able to go all over the world and perform is such an amazing uh, experience for them that it's obviously something they'll never forget. Let's go to the next slide and see. Okay, I love what you told me when, <laughs> yeah, when you were interviewing, uh, when we were, we were going over some of the things, you talked about how family came first. So tell me about that. Well, I mean, outside of God, family is the most important thing to our family. Um, and then music. So I think God, family, music is probably, but as far as family, those relationships, um, as important as talent development is, or helping our children succeed, I think our relationships with our children are more important. And so when Lara was, Lara is a really good violinist, but when she was nine years old, I mean, she kind of fought, Lara likes to fight. <laughs> She's really feisty and she enjoys, you know, fighting. And so music became kind of our, our big fight. And she, I wanted to make sure that I still had a relationship with her. And I could see that she didn't necessarily want to go to Juilliard. It wasn't her dream to be a violinist. And so I kind of took a step back and I allowed her to start practicing on her own and be more in charge of her music. And, um, she's good enough to play with our family and she does a really good job and she's an incredible performer when she feels like doing it <laughs> um and she even when she doesn't feel like doing it she's still a good performer but when she really feels like it like if there's a cute boy in the audience or something she really <laughs> she really is a good performer and and she's a good violinist um and so i i took a step back and decided that you know my relationship with her is more important mm -hmm. And I think that was the right decision. Absolutely. And your husband, he's very supportive. In fact, I was watching The Sound of Music medley and he sang. Yeah, we had him sing. Because in the movie, the, um, Captain Von Trapp sings. He is also, he's dressed as Captain Von Trapp in the, in the video. And it was fun. So he he's actually, he's a very dynamic personality. He's in sales. So he enjoys people. He enjoys, you know, being in front of people. And, um, it's all even more impressive to me that he's willing to kind of be in the background and support our family and, and our performances, but it was fun to highlight him in that video. 
Fabulous. Another thing is um, you and I discussed about some of the values <clears throat> that your children have learned through the discipline and the dedication of um, learning a musical instrument. Tell me some of those values. Oh, help me remember. Um, well, of course, hand and I, well, that's not a value. That's a skill. The hand-eye coordination is a skill. The values, um, learning learning to work hard, is that a value or a skill? Yes, work hard, <laughs> perseverance, discipline, yes. Yeah, so like working hard and not giving up and seeing when your efforts pretty immediately can turn into something. You can see results. Um, learning to serve others through the talents you've been given um, is a huge one. Talents enable us to serve others. That's the best thing to do with our talents. Um, Confidence. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Sometimes I am brilliant and sometimes I'm not. No, Funny. no. Apparently you, you, you were telling me that now your kids, because of their experience, they're able to stand up in front of an audience and- Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, they, my kids are not scared to be in front of people at all. Um, they can give you know, talks in church in a moment's notice. They, I was performing at Time Out for Women with my daughter, Hannah, who's my pianist. and. And the presenters asked her if she'd be willing to, you know, say something to the audience of 2,000 people and like two minutes before we walked out on stage and she said, sure. And she did great. And she wasn't even nervous. Like she wasn't nervous at all. And that's a great skill to give our, our children. Yes, it is. And tell me too, you also said that in terms of school, how they do in school and you feel that that's a direct reflection of the work and the brain power that music requires to learn. Definitely. I, um, I have my own concerts and I'm setting up so many things outside of school and then making sure my kids practice and they also do it. They always do sports on the side as well. They have their own, you know, fun sport thing to keep them active and involved. And, um, and so I always forget that they have homework because I'm so like, I'm so engaged in making sure they get to everything they need to get to and we're all prepared for the concerts and we're prepared for the lessons and they practice and I absolutely forget they have homework. And my kids luckily understand this and so they are very self-motivated on their homework because they know that I, I don't even check on it. I just assume that they're gonna get straight A's and they do. So that works out well. <laughs> but I think it's, it's enabled them to be really self-motivated with that because they know that you know, mom makes sure our music is, gets done. And since homework is the easy thing, we better maybe get it done too. So, you know, in talking about that, I also think just from, I mean, there, when you play a musical instrument, you're exercising the entire brain simultaneously. So you're going to, as you've uh, said, they're going to have discipline. They're going to have the persistence. They're going to be able to do their homework and everything without you trailing them and making certain that it's getting done. And I think those are also added benefits of learning a child learning a musical instrument. Yeah, and I think they also, there's plenty of performances, especially now that we perform so frequently that they don't want to necessarily do. I mean, we do a lot of benefits, we do a lot of church things and those things are worthwhile and fulfilling and I'm, we're thrilled to do them. But I mean, they're not as fun as maybe going to Salzburg and filming a music video or, or performing in Taiwan. They're a little more kind of run of the mill per se. And so, um, but they still have to do them. And I think it's good for kids to do things that they don't necessarily want to do <laughs> yes. because it, it fulfills a greater purpose and it serves others. And even Absolutely. if you don't feel like doing it, tough, too bad. Sorry, you're missing out on your friends, whatever the party or whatever, I'm sorry, but this is more important and we committed to this and we're gonna fulfill our commitment and we're gonna serve others and help this charity or this benefit, you know, get something more important than whatever you're doing with your friends this weekend. Love that, <laughs> love that. And that, they they don't love that. <laughs> well, you know what, they will carry that with them their whole life. All right, yeah, the, the Copeland um, Rock Suite that I wanted to play, I love that. Uh, so tell the viewers a little bit more about that because that is one that I'm going to post and also in there, Laura's playing percussion. So yeah. tell them a little bit about the diversity that they are able to switch instruments with ease. Well, at least some of them. Yeah, Laura, Laura's just really talented. And so when she was probably, I don't know, 11, 10, 11, um, she said she wanted to learn to play percussion. And so, um, 
she just, I gave her a few lessons. I mean, she took lessons for a couple of years and she's just able to pick up any instrument like really quickly. Um, and she basically knows any percussion instrument that is in my arrangements. So she learned to play the Irish Bones so she could play Ding Dong Marley on high, which is really fun. She learned to play the Doombeck and the Boron. The Boron is the Irish drum for Ding Dong Marley on high as well. And the Doombeck is like a Middle Eastern drum for We Three Kings. And um, then we're like, well, we want to play Cashmere, Led Zeppelin's Cashmere, so you need to learn to play a drum set. So we bought her a drum set, and she had like a few lessons, and she plays us. <laughs> Whoa. She, so she's, I mean, she's not, she's not world's greatest drummer, of course, but she's able to perform with us, so it, it works out. And she likes the instruments equally, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's more violinist than a percussionist, but she's able to kind of play those on the side. Perfect. So and then I'm my, sorry. My other kids are able to, I mean, that we're all able to sing. Like we sing in Sound of Music and we're, we sing in a few other of the other arrangements we have. And they all have good voices. So that's, that's something that's been easy for them to pick up as well. And that, again, is just a carryover of musical talent. Now, tell us a little bit about the Copeland Suite. This was uh, filmed at pretty much all day, right? At yeah, we went down to a ranch near Zions and um, took all day to film this. It is such fun music. It's an arrangement by Kendra Lowe. Everything else pretty much we perform is by Kurt Esther, and he's phenomenal and writes us amazing music. This piece is by Kendra Lowe um, and she initially wrote it for me to perform at the um, Stadium of Fire um, when I was opening for Carrie Underwood there and so this was written for me to perform with some other musicians but then I asked Kendra to redo it for me and the kids and then we did a video a music video of it and it's, it's just so much so much fun. And you know, that's what I'm going to post. And when I post this, people look at two things. Number one, how incredibly talented those uh, four kids are. And number two, how much they're enjoying what they're doing. I mean, they're smiling, you can just tell. They're just radiating fun. So it's uh, definitely, uh, Jenny, what three things do you think that you would tell parents if they're helping their children to develop a talent? What three things do you think that are important for parents to know? Um. I would say find an instrument that your child enjoys playing, number one, and then make them stick with it. <laughs> and know, know that it's not, it doesn't have to be fun all the time, it's worth it. Um, so choose something that they have an interest in and stick with it and, oh gosh. Um, make it, maybe you can make it a family thing. I think if everybody's practicing, it's easier for the kids. If only one kid is practicing and everyone else is playing games, that's not so fun. But if you're all engaged in something, whether it's, I don't know, it doesn't have to be the same thing. It doesn't have to all be music. But if, if everybody has their passion and they're working at it, and so you know that you know after school, everybody's practicing whatever it is, I think it's easier to, to keep that motivation. Fabulous. Fabulous. I want uh, us to bring up that other picture of the whole family. It's here. Um, hold up. No, no, not that one. We need to go down a bit. Oh, okay. I'll go back. That's the whole family, but this time. Yeah, we, we're going to go back um, to. Okay, that one. Show that one. <laughs> that one. I love that that picture of the whole family. All of you holding your instruments. Clearly. Uh, You've done an amazing job, Jenny. And again, I just want to emphasize to our viewers, um, the things that you love, it's just a natural course of events that you're going to pass those things down to your children. And so make those, those things legacies in your life. And also uh, my blog post this week, which I'll be posting this evening, uh, I feature three moms, amazing mothers. Uh, and one of them, of course, is Jenny. And she's talking about the importance of developing your children's talents and passing those legacies and the values and all the different things that your children will learn as a result. Jenny, thank you so much. Is there anything else that um, you would like to um, add? Um, to I just that how supportive my husband is. We could not do this without his support. And um, it, I mean, his financial support is huge and his support allowing our family to be kind of taken over by music. Um, 
I'm grateful to him for his support because if he weren't supported, we couldn't do what we need to do. So it, it, it's kind of a whole, everybody in the family needs to be supportive and, and help work together toward this common goal of, of enabling our children to have something in their lives that gives them confidence and enables them to serve others. It's a great thing. Thank you. That is wonderful. I really appreciate you taking the time. I know that your schedule is horrifically busy and for you to take this amount of time to share with us, oh, we really appreciate it. And thank you all of those of you. you who were able to um, come. If, if anyone has any questions, do you want to quickly ask those or we're going to end the broadcast? It looks like we're okay. So thank you again. And thank, thank you. you again, pe people. All right. Thanks Bye -bye. so much. Bye-bye.